Hi, this is the last session of this online class and it's going to be a pretty short one. I'm going to cover coding a questionnaire. So it's not as scary as it sounds. Coding is actually just the process of assigning numerical codes to each possible answer option that a respondent has. So what you see in front of you is a screenshot of a simplified questionnaire with just a couple examples. The first question is, what is your gender? The answer options are female and male. Although I personally prefer to have several more answer options, such as other or prefer not to say or non-binary. For the sake of this example, I'm going to keep it very simple and just show you the example with only female and male, just to show you for coding purposes. So what is your gender? That is a nominal question because the answer options cannot be ranked in a certain order. Female or male, you could have asked male, female, it all doesn't matter. They're only distinguishable from each other based on the descriptor, right? So it's a nominal variable. Now this type of nominal variable, when you only have two answer options, we call them binary variables and you could code them as zero, one or as one, two. So honestly, for this class, it doesn't matter, but for further analytics, let's say you want to take an analytics class. In some cases, it's necessary to code it as zero one as a dummy coded binary variable. But for this class, you can also code it as one being female and two being male. The second question is in which year were you born? And let's say in this example, it was asked by means of a slider scale where people respondents can slide to whichever year of birth applies to them. So the exact number, their year of birth, whatever their year of birth is, is the code in and of itself. That's because the year of birth is numerical already. It's like, how old are you? And, and you say 25. Well, that already is a code in, in and of itself because it is numerical. So this is very easy. The code is already there. The last example is one where you have a Likert scale. Please indicate to what extent the following statements apply to you. And then you have a couple statements such as I like movies or stories with definite endings. I always want to know what people are laughing at and so on. Each of these statements is to be answered on a scale from one to seven, one being completely disagree, seven being completely agree. So let's say you fill in this questionnaire as a respondent and you read the first statement. I like movies or stories with definite endings. Um, I mean, if you were to ask me, I would disagree because I kind of like the unknown and then open uh, and ended movies and stories. So let's say disagree. I would give myself a two. So in that case, I would circle the second little answer option, which corresponds to code number two. For the second statement, I always want to know what people are laughing at. You would adopt that same structure of coding. So you would again start at one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's not like you start at eight, nine, 10 and so on. No, 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 no. Just start back at one. So because each of these statements will be considered a separate variable in your questionnaire, even though it looks like one question in your survey, right? It, it will show up as separate variables for each of these statements. I always want to know what people are laughing at. Hmm. Um, not really. Um, I can kind of live with, with not knowing. So I would probably give myself a four on that scale, neutral. Um, and then the last one, I would like to live in a foreign country for a while. Well, I'm totally doing that, um, living in the US, being from Europe. Uh, but yeah, that's awesome. So I would totally do that again. I mean, I'm going to stay in the US, but I highly encourage it. So I would probably um, give myself a seven on that scale, completely agree. So this shows you that you have a numerical code assigned to each answer option a respondent can possibly have. However, there's one particular case where it gets a little tricky that requires a bit more explanation. So that is those check all that apply questions. Consider the following two questions here on the screen. On the left side, you see which of the following fruits do you like? On the right side, you see which of the following fruits is your favorite. So if you ask, let's say, let's look on the right side first, which of the following fruits is your favorite? mango, pineapple, papaya, orange, banana, and of course many more, but this is a simple example. If the researcher asks you to pick your favorite, it basically implies you can only pick one. So if I were to pick one out of all of these, I would probably say mango. So I would get code one because I would circle the, the answer option of mango. So that would correspond to code one. Um, if I would have picked 
papaya or banana, I would have gotten code three, which corresponds with banana, or code five, which corresponds with, um, sorry, three with papaya, five with banana. So on the left side, this is where it's a little more tricky. If you ask which of the following fruits do you like, check all that apply, and this is key, that those words check all that apply. If you allow a respondent to select more than one answer option, then suddenly each answer option in and of themselves becomes a separate yes or no question. Yeah, sounds strange, but actually it's totally intuitive. Think of it this way. If you ask me which fruits I like, I would select mango, I would select pineapple, I would, uh, probably I would select all of them. I would select papaya, orange and banana. I love fruit. So I would get a one for each answer option. So each answer option in themselves, so mango, pineapple, papaya, and so on, are separate variables in your questionnaire. Yeah, really, they are separate questions in your questionnaire, separate variables, even though they consist of one question again in your survey. Now, of course, let's say I would not have picked orange or papaya, then the coding would have been one for mango, one for pineapple, zero for papaya, zero for orange, and one for banana. So really, each answer option gets treated as a separate zero one. This is extremely important because you'll see when you download your data, if you have any check all that apply questions, when you look at it in SPSS, it's gonna look really funky with all those zeros and ones. So these are the basic coding rules, really. This is all you need to know. Every closed ended question needs a code number associated with every possible response. Always use single digit code numbers at the beginning. Start with one, increment by one, and use the same uh, logic direction of the scale, so increasing. Also use the same coding for identically structured questions. So if you have multiple questions that look the same, always start again by one, increment by one, so use that same coding structure. And then those check all that apply questions should be treated as separate yes or no questions. So every answer option should be treated as a separate yes or no. Alrighty. Hope that was clear. Um, if not, let me know if you have any questions. This is a little exercise for yourself if you want to do it. I mean, you can you can kind of practice um, on your own. Try coding this questionnaire. Also try critiquing this questionnaire because, for example, number five, what is your current GPA? As you can see, it's asked in a categorical way, uh, which is not ideal. I already told you that ideally, whenever you can, you ask something at the highest possible measurement level. So in this case, this question five, you could ask as a ratio scale by just letting people fill in their GPA, uh, the exact number. So anyway, this is something you can go through on your own. And then the last thing I want to let you know before this class ends is when you are working on your questionnaire, make sure you pre-test it informally a couple times. Make sure that every question is very clear, that it's not too long, that the flow makes sense, that the terms, every word in your question is understandable. Also, and this is, this is key, make sure you don't forget any crucial questions. Sometimes I have students forget to ask uh, respondents age or, or gender or some other basic demographics. Uh, but also crucial questions pertaining to your research topic. You want to make sure you, you have them all covered in your survey. And then make sure there's no irrelevant questions lingering. So really, if your survey is on the longer side, take a critical look at your own survey and see if there's any questions you can cut. All right. Okay. 